As of now, we spoke about pressure and we spoke about force, but we really haven't yet defined what pressure is. Now, even though pressure and force aren't exactly the same quantity, these two quantities are in fact related by the following equation. The pressure an object feels is equal to the force that object feels per some given area that we're considering. And the force always acts at a perpendicular angle with respect to the area. Now, because of this formula, we see that our units of pressure are newtons per meter squared, where one newton per meter squared is equivalent to one pascal. Now, even though force is a vector, pressure is not a vector, it's a scalar, and that means it only has magnitude and no direction. So, let's look at one particular application of the following formula. Let's suppose the two feet of an 80 kilogram person have a combined surface area of 600 centimeters squared. So using this information, we'd like to calculate the pressure exerted by the two feet on the floor. So let's suppose that this area represents the combined area of the two feet, so it's 600 centimeters cubed, and the force that's acting on this area is the force of gravity that's acting on the mass of the person. So the force which acts at a perpendicular angle with respect to the area is m times g, where m is our mass of the person. So pressure is equal to force, which is m times g divided by area. So m times g is 80 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And the area given in meters is simply this quantity divided by 10,000, so 0.06 meters uh, squared. We plug this into the calculator and we get 1.3 times 10 to the 4 newtons per meter squared is the pressure that the floor feels as a result of the area, the surface area of the two feet and the gravitational force that acts on those two feet. Now, pressure is a very important scalar quantity that we usually use whenever we talk about fluids. So let's discuss pressure in fluids. So for a fluid at rest, the force created by the fluid always acts perpendicular to the surface of any object that the fluid touches. For example, if we take the following cylindrical container and we place water, a fluid, into that cylindrical container and the water comes to rest, well, the water will create a force that will act at a perpendicular angle to the surface of that container, as shown by the following force. Once again, for a liquid or a fluid, such as a gas, at rest, the force created by that fluid on the container acts at a perpendicular angle with respect to our container, with respect to the surface of that container. Now, from common knowledge, we know that if we take an object and we place an object into a fluid, the object's pressure, or the pressure the object will feel as a result of the fluid, will increase as we go deeper into the fluid. Now, we want to ask the following question. How exactly does pressure depend on the depth of, the, of a uniformly dense fluid? So let's suppose we have the following container and we place a fluid into that container and the fluid comes to rest. So we want to find a relationship, a formula, between pressure and the depth of our fluid. So, Let's suppose that H is the vertical distance from the surface of the fluid to some point below the surface. And let's choose the point to be at the bottom of our container. So we want to determine what the pressure an object would feel when that object is found at the bottom of our container, a vertical distance H from the surface of our fluid. So, from this equation, we know that pressure is equal to force divided by area, 
where the force is simply m times g, where m is the mass of this entire fluid. Now, the mass of this entire fluid is given by taking the density of that fluid and multiplying by the volume that this fluid takes up. So we can replace mass with density multiplied by the volume, multiplied by the g, and this entire numerator is the force. So we divide this by the area. Now, what exactly is volume? Well, volume is equal to the surface area multiplied by the height. So the surface area of the bottom of our container multiplied by the height gives us the volume of this entire region that the fluid takes up. So we can replace volume with area times height. And notice that area appears on the top in the numerator as well as in the denominator. And that means if we cancel the areas, we see that pressure is equal to the product of the density of the fluid, the gravitational constant G, and the height above the surface of the fluid. So the height that begins at the surface of the fluid and ends at the point that we're considering. So this is our relationship between the pressure and the height. We see that as the height or as the depth increases, the pressure also increases. And we see that as the density increases, as the fluid becomes more dense, that means the pressure also increases. So notice the following important point about the force that an object feels inside a fluid. The force an object feels below the surface of the fluid is a result of the weight of the fluid above that object. So in other words, if an object is placed at the bottom of the fluid, the force that that object feels is a direct result of how much fluid is found above that object. How much weight of that fluid is found above that object. Now, let's look at the following example. Suppose the surface of water in a storage tank is 40 meters above a water faucet in a room of a nearby house. Find the pressure difference. So let's look at our diagram. Here we have our storage tank which contains water and the distance from our top of the water to the faucet is 40 meters. So to calculate the pressure difference, we simply use this formula, where the pressure difference is equivalent to the density times g times the change in height. So we know the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. We know the gravitational constant is 9.8 meters per second squared, and we know the change in h is 40 meters. So we plug these quantities in, we multiply them, and we get a change in pressure of 3.92 times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter squared.